Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we are going to be animating a text outline. So here I have a simple text plus node. I have disabled the solid fill and I have enabled the text outline on here. We have the ability to add the outline, but we don't have the option to animate. So for example, if I drag in a rectangle mask and uncheck solid and instead I will increase the border width we have the ability to animate its length uh, we don't have such property for the text plus over here all we can do is just add a stroke and that's just it there is no option to animate it now to animate it we have to use svg for that here i have my vector editing program in affinity designer it can work in any uh, vector editing program and i have this text layer over here first thing we'll do is we will uh, add a stroke on this so under fill I'm going to click on it and disable fill and in stroke I'm just going to increase the stroke width something like this and then I can go ahead and change the color of the stroke as well I can just pick any color that I want I'm gonna just make it white for now and yeah it's not visible that's because the background is also white if I go to file document setup and I can enable transparent background so we can still see the text which is kind of hard to see i'm gonna draw a background real quick and just make it black for now let's move it under the text over here right now it's a text layer it's editable you can go ahead and uh, with the text tool you can still um, add text to it and remove text from it uh, but what we want to do is we want to turn this text layer into a shape or a path so to do that, we have to right click and click on convert to curves. If you don't do this, then Fusion will treat it as a text plus node, which we don't want. So right click, click on convert to curves and it will just uh, take this and convert it into shapes. So if you expand this layer on the right side, you can see we have uh, all these different shapes over here. Now you cannot edit uh, the text layer, it's non-editable. So yeah, once you are done with that, you can get rid of this rectangle layer. We don't want that to be visible, you can hide it. And you can go to file and click on export and export it as an SVG file. And I have re renamed mine to stroke. So I'm gonna just uh, replace this file, click on yes to replace it. And now back into Fusion, we will straight away go to the toolbar at the top click on fusion import and click on svg and just locate this file and it's on my desktop double click on it and click on ok this is the resolution of the svg file so i'm going to keep it 1080 by 1080 for now and click on ok if you take a look at the file this is how it is going to look great so if you double click on the group you will see that it will contain all these different nodes now you can see it says path 1, path 2 and if you highlight them all, these are basically your masks and we already know if you apply a mask, you have the option to control the length as well. So we'll use it to create our animation. I'm going to select path 1, actually I'm going to select these both of these two nodes. Uh, hit F2 on the keyboard uh, to bring up the rename tool. This The first node is the S letter, so I'm going to type in S. The second is the T letter, type in T and click on OK. Of course, you can rename it to whatever you want. If you drag path three to the viewer, this is our letter R. So I'm going to rename it to letter R and path three underscore two. If you view this, this is the inside of the R letter. So I'm just going to rename it to small R. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rename all of these layers like so. So if I view this all path four, if I open that up this is the o letter and the small o which is the inside of that letter then we have k and then we have the e right now the first thing we'll do is we will publish the border width property so right click and click on publish and now we can reference to this border width at any time so if you want to let's say uh, you decide to change the border width or the stroke width of your letters then you can just simply control it right over here you don't have to go into all these individual nodes to do that and uh, to link all these properties you have to actually go to the second letter let's go to letter t over here under border width right click and we have to connect the property as well 
So we will connect it to the letter S and border width. So now if you go to, or you can even do this in the letter T itself. If you ch make changes over here to border width, the same changes will be applied to other letters as well. And this is really powerful. Once you link the properties, you have to just use the single slider to control all of these letters. I'm going to do this on all of these letters. So I'm going to go to letter R over here. Actually, I can highlight all of these nodes and then I can go in uh, these nodes individually. So border width, right click, connect to letter S border width, then go to letter R and right click on border width, connect to S border width. And let's click on the next letter and connect it to the border width of the letter S. Great, once they are all linked, now to test it out, you can just change the stroke and you can see that all of the strokes will move accordingly. Then the next thing is the animation. So we'll go again, go to the very first node, which is the letter S over here. And for the animation, we need to make sure we are at the frame zero over here and we are going to keyframe the length property. So create keyframe, set the length to zero and let's go to frame 60 and increase the length to one. And I'm going to go to the spline over here, make sure the length is selected, then click on zoom to fit and then click on select all and hit S on the keyboard to smooth out the graph. Or you can also click on the very first icon to do that. Now, if you take a look at the animation, this is how it is going to look. Now you can also notice that we have cap over here. So you can control that as well. You want, if you want it to be rounded, you can click on this icon to make it rounded or flat or square. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to keep it flat. Uh, great. Now we want to apply this animation on all of these other text letters. And again, we can go to that node for our case. It's the T letter over here. I'm going to right click on length, click on connect to S and then length. Here we don't have to publish the property over here as it's already been done by the fusion and do the same thing with letter r right click on length connect to letter s and then click on length and we'll just repeat this process for all of these nodes over here so once you connect all of these your animation will look something like this all right, we are almost done. Now the only downside to linking the property is that let's say you want to delay the animation on all of these letters. Let's say you want to uh, make sure that the letter S appears first, then T, then R, then O, then K, and so on and so forth. Now it's not quite simple to do this. If you go to keyframes and you select, uh, let's say the letter T, and you want to make sure that this animation starts at frame, let's say frame 10, what it will do is it will basically change the keyframes for all the letters. You cannot just, you know, move the keyframes independently. That's the only downside I think uh, there is to this method. Now what we can do is we can close out of this. Let's copy this node group, copy and paste it down below. And I'm going to call this uh, circle. All right, click on OK. So we'll be creating the glowing uh, circle shape. For that, we have to again double click to go inside the group. And we have to select all these nodes. And we have to go inside these nodes individually. And we have to reset the length over here. So double click on the length property to reset it. And uh, let's reset length on these nodes. Uh, that's because we are going to be animating the position property instead of the length property. So let's reset length like that. And now if you take a look at this, the merge four, let's view this. There will be no animation going on. That is because we reset the length. What we are going to animate is the position. And the reason is because uh, to create a small circle, what we have to do is let me just go focus on this shape, the very first shape over here. I'm just going to set the length to zero. And then we are going to click on this icon that says rounded. And this will add in the circle over here. And then we can animate the position property. So if you ch change the position value, you can see that it will move around the path over here. 
So this is uh, what we want to do. So we'll go to frame zero, create a keyframe on position and go to frame 60 and set the position to one. Then we will go to the spline editor and click on this icon that says zoom to fit. Make sure the position is ticked over here. I'm going to click on this icon that says select all and then click on the very first icon to smooth out the animation. So if you take a look at the animation, this is how it is going to look. And now we're going to apply uh, the same style and the animation to all these different layers. Right now I'm going to select all of these nodes except the very first node because we already have the styling and animation applied to this. So you can see all these nodes in the inspector here. What we need to do is make sure that the uh, border style is set to rounded. This is S1. Um, we don't want to do anything over here. So we'll go to uh, the letter T over here. Make sure that the length is set to zero and the border style is set to rounded. You can also link this property to the S1 as we did before, but I don't think linking is necessary over here. So just make sure the length is zero and the border style is rounded. And then we will link the position property. Right click on position, click on connect to S underscore one and click on position. Then we'll repeat the process for the next letter. Set the length to zero, set the border style to rounded and animate the position by connecting it to S underscore one and position. Now this process is repetitive. We have to do this in all of these nodes. So I'm going to probably fast forward this part. Set this to zero, set the border style to rounded, right click on position, connect to S underscore one and position. This is how it's going to look. If you click away, you can see that we have some moving dots looks like kind of braille system anyways let's close out of this group and let's connect these two together this result in merge so if you take a look at this merge file you can see that we have both the dots and the stroke animation all together so let's um after this circle add in something like a soft glow click on add and i'm just going to increase the glow size or maybe decrease it and increase the gain amount and I'm going to copy and paste this glow. Control C, Control V, paste it after the glow. And I'm going to increase the glow size like so. And also I'm going to right click and uh, go to options and uncheck chunk underlay so that we can see it much better. So here's our animation. Uh, you can actually see the glowing dot and then we have the animated line over here. Pretty cool, right? Then what you can do is to fade away the glowing uh, shapes over here, the orbs, we can go to frame 60 and make sure we are in merge 5 over here. We can go to settings and create a keyframe on blend. And then let's move 5 frames forward and let's reduce the blend amount to 0. And that way you will end up with an animation like this. So after this merge 5, we will add in a background node, click on add. And if you view the merge 6, it is going to look something like this, still in 1080 by 1080 composition. But if we right click on merge and click on swap inputs, it should be in 1920 by 1080. Now for the background, you can pretty much change it to any color that you want. I'm going to set this to transparent. And uh, after this merge six, I'm going to add in, a, you can pretty much add any effect that you want, but I kind of like the light rays. So if you view this light rays, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to just bring it right in the center. Of course, you can play the animation. This is how it's going to look. Uh, but I'm going to just increase the length and the softness and the brightness maybe as well. I think it looks, it just gives it an interesting look. So if you play the animation, you can see how cool it looks, right? And you can definitely change the colors if you want to do that. But that is pretty much it. That's how you can create this text stroke or outline animation inside of DaVinci Resolve. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.